Hey everyone, welcome to my GTE Monza lap guide on Le Mans Ultimate. As of right now, I think the Ferrari is still the more dominant GTE car, so we'll be sticking with it for now. I think the braking points mostly are quite similar to that of GT3 cars, so if you're used to Monza and, um, on ACC, you'll get used to this quite quickly. Into the first turn though, our braking point is between the 150 and the 100 board. We're going to be getting really hard on the brakes here, and as we get close towards our turn in point, we're going to start trailing off the brake and we want to avoid hitting that big sausage curb on the inside. Get as close to it as you can, little, little burst on the throttle there, then on the brakes just a touch, and we want to again avoid that inside sausage curb, just using the flat curbs and then pulling, pulling on the throttle, using all the track on exit, except don't get onto the sand, you touch the sand and you'll really hurt your exit. So use as much of the track as you can, and then we build up our speed heading down towards the second chicane, and for that chicane, it's also quite a tricky one. It's a little bit more difficult than the first one, I'd say. There's a little bit more technique involved. But we'll head towards our hard braking zone, which is going to be just between the 100 board and the off-road on the right there. So braking quite hard and bringing it down to second gear. For the first part of the chicane, I would suggest avoid the sausage curb. It just, I haven't had a good run by using the sausage curb there. And for the second one, it's it's honestly uh, it's worth experimenting because you can use the sausage curb here but you can also go fast with going around it it's actually a lot smoother avoiding it but if you just nibble it you can carry quite a lot of speed through there and i think i squared off that chicane a little bit too much on that occasion you want to just try carry your speed through there as much as you can and avoid the sand on exit for lesmo one you want to start getting on the brakes before that little orange mark on the fence there on the right and then really start turning the steering wheel in, bring the car towards the inside, carry your speed through here, trust the downforce. Don't get up onto that inside curb too much and then get on the throttle and then bring your car towards the outside, Just using all the track again. Don't drop your left wheels on that flat green bit, you'll get an invalid lap. For Lesmo 2, we want to brake quite well alongside the 50 board. We want to carry quite a bit of speed into this turn to take it optimally. And I think optimally, optimally you should be going slightly around this curb so you're not hitting the big bump and unsettling the car and exit. Carrying your speed through there using the downforce again and running to the exit and running your left wheels no wider than that, those white strips. Don't go onto that green flat bit or your lap becomes invalid. And also if you brake a little earlier into that turn you could use that steeper part of the curb but I think it's faster to go slightly around it like I showed just then. Now uh, entering Ascari, we want, to, we want to brake just at the edge of this off-road here, hard on the brakes, and we want to trail the brakes there, and then we can cut a little bit of this curb on the inside, only a little bit, make sure we're trailing and carrying our speed through, you'll get a little unstable if you go on the curb a bit. And through here you can go flat, but I think, well in this particular lap I had a little safety lift, and I'd suggest to upshift to fourth gear early, because when you upshift early then you can get on the throttle harder, and it's just a better experience overall, and I think you can go through there quite quick like that. Exiting Ascari, don't go over the anti-cut strips, it just unsettles the car too much. And then on exit, don't touch the sand. If you go up to the sand, that's too wide and you've, your lap becomes invalid. Quite a lot to go through in such little time, but I hope that this has been helpful so far. We'll head down towards the last turn now. We're looking out for that light board on the left there. We want to break pretty much alongside it, maybe very slightly before it. If you're really confident, just alongside it. We can trail our brakes into this turn and we want to carry our speed again using that downforce. And then don't get up onto the inside curb, but as soon as the, the front's pulled towards the inside, we can start getting onto the throttle again, carrying our speed towards the outside. I might have gone just a tiny little bit too wide here, I think. But once your car is unloaded and you can pull towards the inside again, do that. Don't stay all the way on the outside unnecessarily because you'll cost yourself time. So cut the shortest line as, pos uh, as you can once the car is unloaded out of the final turn. And there we go, that was quite a nice lap. So I'll play through the lap again without me speaking and without all the pauses and then after this I'll do a quick pit entry guide so if you're interested stick around for that. See you at the end of the lap.
Right, so now with the lap out of the way, we can take a quick look at the pit entry. Take the last turn as you normally would, and there will be a white line that goes across the track. That'll be one of our braking references. And also these dotted lines or these striped lines. We want to brake a little bit before the third one, as I've pointed out on screen there. Brake really hard onto the brakes, down to first gear, put the pit liner on, and we should be 60 at the line. If your tyres are quite worn, you might want to probably brake a little earlier. Uh, that's been this guide at Monza and the GTEs. I hope it's helped you guys out. And I know that the daily races are here this week. I'll try work on the LMP2 one next. And I hope to see you soon.